insuperable cost is an exempting circumstance which may be applied to Miss Prison of Treason, 2011. Which of the following circumstances may be appreciated as aggravating in the crime of treason, 2012? Cruelty and ignominy. What is the crime committed by a public officer who discloses to the representative of a foreign nation the contents of the articles, data, or information of a confidential nature relative to the defense of the Philippine archipelago, which he has in his possession by reason of the public office he holds, 2012? Espionage. Can a crime of treason be committed only by a Filipino citizen? No, the offender in the crime of treason is either a Filipino citizen or an alien residing in the Philippines because while permanent allegiance is owed by the alien to his own country, he owes a temporary allegiance to the Philippines where he resides. The inter-island vessel MV Viva Lines 1 while cruising off Batanes, was forced to seek shelter at the harbor of Kaohsiung, Taiwan, because of a strong typhoon. While anchored in said harbor, Max, Baldo, and Bogart arrived in a speedboat, fired a bazooka at the bow of the vessel, boarded it, and divested the passengers of their money and jewelry. A passenger of MV Viva Lines 1, Totong, took advantage of the confusion to set an old grudge with another passenger and killed him. After their apprehension, all four were charged with qualified piracy before a Philippine court. Was the charge of qualified piracy against the three persons, Max, Baldo, and Bogard, who boarded the inter-island vessel correct? Explain. The charge is correct. Qualified piracy was committed when the offenders seized the vessel by firing on or boarding the same. In the problem, they even went further by divesting the passengers of their money and jewelry. The vessel was anchored in the harbor of Kaohsiung, Taiwan, and it is submitted that the crime was committed within the territorial jurisdiction of another country. The Supreme Court has ruled that the high seas contemplated under Article 122 of the Revised Penal Code includes the three-mile limit of any state, People versus Lol Law et al. Moreover, piracy is an offense that can be tried anywhere because it is a crime against the law of nations. Because peace negotiations on the Spratly situation had failed, the People's Republic of China declared war against the Philippines. Myra, a Filipina who lives with her Italian expatriate boyfriend, discovered email correspondence between him and a certain General Tsu at China. On March 12, 2010, Myra discovered that on even date, her boyfriend had sent an email to General Tonkatsu in which he agreed to provide vital information on the military defenses of the Philippines to the Chinese government in exchange for one million and his safe return to Italy. Two weeks later, Myra decided to report the matter to the proper authorities. Did Myra commit a crime? Explain. Yes. Myra committed the crime of misprison of treason under Article 116 of the Revised Penal Code for failing to report or make known as soon as possible to the governor or provincial fiscal or to the mayor of fiscal of the city where she resides, the conspiracy between her Italian boyfriend and the Chinese general to commit treason against the Philippine government in time of war. She decided to report the matter to the proper authorities only after two weeks. The Royal S.S. Maru, a vessel registered in Panama, was 300 nautical miles from Apari, Cagayan, when its engines malfunctioned. The captain ordered his men to drop anchor and repair the ship. While the officers and crew were asleep, our men boarded the vessel and took away several crates containing valuable items and loaded them in their own motorboat. Before the band left, they planted an explosive which they detonated from a safe distance. The explosion damaged the hull of the ship, killed 10 crewmen, and injured 15 others. What crime or crimes, if any, were committed? 2016. The crime of qualified piracy under Article 123 of the Revised Penal Code has been committed. 
The elements of piracy being present, namely 1. That the vessel is 1 on the high seas, 2. That the offenders are not members of its complement or passenger of the vessel, and 3. That the offenders a. Attack or seize that vessel, or b. Seize the whole or part of the cargo of said vessel, its equipment or personal belongings of its complement or passengers. The latter act is committed when the offenders took away several crates containing valuable items and loaded them in their own motorboat. The crime of piracy is qualified because 1. The offenders have seized the vessel by boarding, and 2. The crime of piracy was accompanied by murder and physical injuries. The facts show that the offenders planted an explosive in the vessel which they detonated from a safe distance, and the explosion killed 10 crewmen and injured 15 others. The number of persons killed on the occasion of piracy is not material. The law considers qualified piracy as a special complex crime, regardless of the number of victims. People vs. CEO A postal van containing mail matters, including checks and treasure warrants, was hijacked along a national highway by 10 men, two of whom were armed. They used force, violence, and intimidation against three postal employees who were occupants of the van, resulting in the unlawful taking and the transportation of the entire van and its contents. 2012. If you were the public prosecutor, would you charge the 10 men who hijacked the postal van with violation of Presidential Decree Number 532, otherwise known as Anti-Piracy and Anti-Highway Robbery Law of 1974? No, I would not charge the 10 men with the crime of highway robbery. The mere fact that the offense charge was committed on a highway would not be the determinant for the application of PD-532. If a motor vehicle, either stationary or moving on a highway, is forcibly taken at gunpoint by the accused who happened to take a fancy there too, the location of the vehicle at the time of the unlawful taking would not necessarily put the offense within the ambit of PD-532. In this case, the crime committed is violation of the anti kidnapping Act of 1972, People v. Puno. Moreover, there is no showing that the 10 men or a band of outlaws organized for the purpose of depredation upon the persons and properties of innocent and defenseless inhabitants who travel from one place to another. What was shown is one isolated hijacking of a postal van. It was not stated in the facts given that the 10 men previously attempted similar robberies by them to establish indiscriminate commission thereof. Philoteov, Jr. v. Sandigan Bayan If you were the defense counsel, what are the elements of the crime of highway robbery that the prosecution should prove to sustain a conviction? Under Section 2 of PD 532, highway robbery is defined as a seizure of any person for ransom extortion or other unlawful purposes, or the taking away of the property of another by means of violence against or intimidation of person or force upon things or other unlawful means committed by any person on any Philippine highway. Hence, the elements of highway robbery are 1. Intent to gain 2. Unlawful taking of the property of another 3. Violence against or intimidation of any person 4. Committed in a Philippine highway. 5. Indiscriminate victim. To obtain a conviction for highway robbery, the prosecution must prove that the accused were organized for the purpose of committing robbery indiscriminately. If the purpose is only particular robbery, the crime is only robbery or robbery in band if there are at least four armed participants. People versus Mendoza. Compelling the pilot of an aircraft of Philippine Registry to change his destination is a violation of the Anti-Hijacking Law, or RA-6235-2013. In his homily, Father Chris loudly denounced the many extrajudicial killings committed by the men in uniform. Policemen stoned, then attending the Mass, was peeved by the denunciations of Father Chris. He immediately approached the priest during the homily, openly displayed his firearm tucked in his waist, and menacingly uttered at the priest, Father, may kalalagyan kayo kung hindi kayo tumigil. His brazenness terrified the priest who cut short his homily then and there. The celebration of the Mass 
was disrupted, and the congregation left the church in disgust over the actuations of Policeman Stone, a co-parishioner. The office of the provincial prosecutor is now about to resolve the case, and is smalling on what to charge Policeman Stone with. May Policeman Stone be properly charged with either or both of the following crimes, or if not, with what proper crime? A. Interruption of religious worship as defined and punished under Article 132 of the Revised Penal Code, and or B. Offending the religious feelings as defined and punished under Article 133 of the Revised Penal Code, Explain, 2017 Bar. Policeman Stone, or Stone may be charged with interruption of religious worship. Under the Revised Penal Code, a public officer or employee who shall prevent or disturb the ceremonies or manifestations of any religion shall be liable for interruption of religious worship. Hence, Policeman Stone, a public officer, approached the priest, displayed his firearm and threatened the priest, which caused the disruption of the Mass and the leaving of the congregation. Policeman Stone, therefore, may be charged of interruption of religious worship. B. Policeman Stone may not be charged with the crime of offending religious feelings. The Supreme Court has ruled that the acts must be directed against religious practice or dogma or ritual for the purpose of ridicule, as mocking or scoffing at or attempting to damage an object of religious veneration. People vs. Baez Policeman Stone threatened the priest because of the priest's statements during his homily and not to mock or ridicule the ceremony. Consequently, Policeman Stone may not be charged with the crime of offending religious feelings. What is the criminal liability, if any, of a mayor who, without being authorized by law, compels prostitutes residing in the city to go to and live in another place against their will? 2012. The mayor is criminally liable for expulsion. True or false? A policeman who, without a judicial order, enters a private house over the owner's opposition is guilty of trespass to dwelling. False. The crime committed by the policeman in this case is violation of domicile because the official duties of a policeman carry with it an authority to make searches and seizure upon judicial order. He is therefore acting under color of his official authority, Article 128. X. A police officer placed a hood on the head of W, a suspected drug pusher, and watched as Y and Z, police trainee, beat up and tortured W to get his confession. X is liable as a principal in violation of the Anti-Torture Act, 2011. What is the proper charge against police officer and employees who, being in conspiracy with the rebels, fail to resist the rebellion by all means in their power, or shall continue to discharge the duties of their offices under the control of the rebels, or shall accept appointment to office under them? Rebellion. What is the proper charge against a person who, without taking arms or being in open hostility against the government, shall incite others to deprive Congress of its legislative powers? by means of speeches or writings. Unlawful use of means of publication or unlawful utterances. Alternative answer, inciting to rebellion or insurrection. What is the crime committed when a group of persons entered the municipal building rising publicly and taking up arms in pursuance of the movement to prevent exercise of governmental authority with respect to the residents of the municipality concerned for the purpose of effecting charges or changes in the manner of governance and removing such locality under their control from allegiance to the laws of the government. Insurrection or Rebellion, Article 134, RPC. When is a disturbance of public order deemed to be tumultuous? The disturbance shall be deemed tumultuous if caused by more than three persons who are armed or provided with means of violence. What is the proper charge against a group of four persons who without public uprising employ force to prevent the holding of any popular election? Direct assault. A, B, and C organized a meeting in which the audience was incited to the commission of the crime of sedition. Some of the persons present at the meeting were carrying unlicensed firearms 
What crime, if any, was committed by A, B, and C, as well as those who were carrying unlicensed firearms and those who were merely present at the meeting? Illegal assembly for A, B, and C, and all those present at the meeting. Which of the following statements constitute inciting to sedition? Speeches extolling communism and urging the people to hold a national strike and paralyze commerce and trade. A police officer who immediately returns the bribe money handed over to him commits no crime. Dr. Cho, a government doctor, failed to submit his daily time record, DTR, from January to March 2000 and did not get approval of his sick leave application for April because of evidence that he was actually moonlightening elsewhere. Thus, the medical d director caused the withholding of his salary for the periods in question until he submitted his DTRs in May 2000. Can Dr. Cho prosecute the medical director for causing him undue injury in violation of the anti graft and crop practices? No, since Dr. Cho brought it upon himself, having failed to submit the required DTRs. In malversation of public funds, the offender's return of the amount malverse has the following effect. It is mitigating. Direct bribery is a crime involving moral turpitude. From which of the following elements of direct bribery can moral turpitude be inferred? The offender takes a gift with a view to committing a crime in exchange. Mr. Gray opened a savings account with Bank A with an initial deposit of 50,000 pesos. A few years later, he deposited a check for 200000 drawn from Bank B and endorsed by Mr. White. Ten days later, Mr. Gray withdrew the 200000 from his account. Mr. White later complained to Bank B when the amount of 200000 was later debited to his account as he did not issue the check and his signature thereon was forged. Mr. Gray subsequently deposited another check signed by Mr. White for 200000 which amount he later withdrew. Upon receiving the amount, Mr. Gray was arrested by agents of the National Bureau of Investigation. Mr. Gray was convicted of estafa and attempted estafa, both through the use of commercial documents, 2014. A. Mr. Gray claims as defense that except for Mr. White's claim of forgery, there was no evidence showing that he was the author of the forgery and Mr. White did not suffer any injuries as to the second check, attempted Stafa, rule on the defense of Mr. Gray. The first defense of Mr. Gray, that there was no evidence showing that he was the author of the forgery, has no merit. The law presumes that the possessor and user of a falsified document is the falsifier or forger thereof. Likewise, his second defense that Mr. White did not suffer any injuries as to the second check attempted to suffer has no merit. Damage or intent to cause damage is not considered in attempted to suffer. It is considered only in consummated to suffer. B. Mr. Gray claims that he was entrapped illegally because there was no showing that the second check was a forge and, therefore, his withdrawal based on the second check was a legal act. Is Mr. Gray correct? Mr. Gray is not correct. The fact that the first check is forged justifies the entrapment of Mr. Gray, since there is already probable cause that the second check is also a forgery. Further, granting for the sake of argument that the entrapment was illegal, such will not validate the withdrawal based on the second check, which is also forged. His criminal liability in forging the second check is not affected by the alleged illegality of the entrapment procedure. The guard was entrusted with the conveyance or custody of a detention prisoner who escaped through his negligence. What is the criminal liability of the escaping prisoner? 2012. The escaping prisoner does not incur criminal liability. Tancho, a member of drug syndicate, was a detention prisoner in the provincial jail of X province. Brusco, another member of the syndicate, regularly visited Tancho. Edri, the guard in charge who had been receiving gifts from Busco. Every time he visited Tancho, became friendly with him and became relaxed in the inspection of his belongings during his jail visits. In one of Busco's visits, he was able to smuggle in a pistol which Tancho used to disarm the guards and destroy the padlock of the main gate of the jail, enabling Tancho to escape. What crime or crimes did Tancho, Busco, and Edri commit? 2015 
Dancho committed the crime of direct assault under Article 148 for disarming the guards with the use of pistol while they are engaged in the performance of their duties. Using a pistol to disarm the guards manifests criminal intention to defy the law and its representatives at all hazard. Note, illegal possession of firearm may also be considered. Edry committed infidelity in the custody of prisoner or evasion through negligence under Article 224. As the guard in charge, Edry was negligent in relaxing the inspection of the brusque's belongings during jail visits, allowing him to smuggle a pistol to Densho, which he subsequently used to escape. By accepting gifts from Brusco, who was part of the syndicate to which Dancho belonged, he is also guilty of indirect bribery under Article 211. Brusco committed delivery of prisoner from jail under Article 156, qualified by his bribery of Edry. Helping a person confined in jail to escape constitutes his crime. Helping means furnishing the prisoner with the material means or tools which greatly facilitate his escape. Hence, providing a pistol which help Dencho to escape is delivery of prisoner from jail. Miss Reyes, a lady professor, caught Mariano, one of her students, cheating during the examination. Aside from calling Mariano's attention, she confiscated his examination booklet and sent him out of the room, causing Mariano extreme embarrassment. In class the following day, Mariano approached Miss Reyes and without any warning slapped her on the face. Mariano would have inflicted grave injuries on Miss Reyes had not Dencho, another student, intervened. Mariano then turned his ire on Dencho and punched him repeatedly, causing him injuries. What crime or crimes, if any, did Mariano commit? Mariano is liable for two counts of direct assault. First, when he slapped Miss Reyes, who is a person in authority expressly mentioned in Article 152 of the RPC, who was in the performance of her duties on the day of the commission of the assault. Second, when he repeatedly punched Densho, who became an agent of the person in authority when he came to the aid of a person in authority, Ms. Reyes. Kelly Selik versus People How is the crime of coup d'etat committed? When a person holding public employment undertakes a swift attack accompanied by strategy or stealth, directed against public utilities or other facilities needed for the exercise and continued possession of power for the purpose of diminishing state power. During a military uprising aimed at ousting the duly constituted authorities and taking over the government, General Tejero and his men forcibly took over the entire rich hotel, which they used as their base. They used the rooms and other facilities of the hotel, ate all the available food they found, and detained some hotel guests. What crime did General Tejero and his men commit? Coup d'etat. Rigoberto gate crashed the 71st birthday party of Judge Lorenzo, armed with a piece of wood commonly known as dos por dos. Rigoberto hit Judge Lorenzo on the back, causing the latter's hospitalization for 30 days. By an investigation, it appeared that Rigoberto had a grudge against Judge Lorenzo, who two years earlier had cited Ligoberto in contempt and ordered his imprisonment for three days. Is Ligoberto guilty of direct assault? Why or may not? No, Rigoberto is not guilty of direct assault because Judge Lorenzo has ceased to be a judge when he was attacked. He has retired 71 years old from his position as a person in authority when he was attacked, hence the attack on him cannot be regarded as against a person in authority anymore. Would your answer be the same if the reason for the attack was that when Judge Lorenzo was still a practicing lawyer 10 years ago, he prosecuted Ligoberto and succeeded in sending him to jail for one year? Yes, Rigoberto is guilty of direct assault because the employment of violence was by reason of an actual performance of a duty by the offended party acting as a practicing lawyer. Lawyers are considered person in authority by virtue of Patas Pambansa 873, which states that lawyers in the actual performance of their professional duties or on the occasion of such performance shall be deemed persons in authority, but the crime having been committed 10 years ago may have already prescribed because it is punishable by a correctional penalty. X, Y, and Z 
agreed among themselves to attack and kill a, a police officer. But they left their homemade guns in their vehicle before approaching him. What crime have they committed? A. Conspiracy to commit direct assault. B. Attempted direct assault. C. Conspiracy to commit direct assault. D. Illegal possession of firearms. Answer is letter D. Illegal possession of firearms. What is the criminal liability, if any, of a physician who issues a false medical certificate in connection with the practice of his profession? The physician is criminally liable for falsification of medical certificate. The baptism of A was solemnized by B, an ecclesiastical minister, in the absence of C, one of the godparents. Upon request of the mother of A, B caused the inclusion of the name of C in the baptismal certificate of A as one of the godparents and allowed a proxy for C during the baptismal ceremony. What is the criminal liability of any of the ecclesiastical minister? The ecclesiastical minister is not criminal liable because the insertion of the name of C in the baptismal certificate will not affect the civil status of A. Erwin and Bea approached Mayor Abral and requested him to solemnize their marriage. Mayor Abral agreed. Erwin and Bea went to Mayor Abral's office on the day of the ceremony, but Mayor Abral was not there. When Erwin and Bea inquired where the Mayor Abral was, his chief of staff, Donato, informed them that the mayor was campaigning for the coming elections. Donato, Donato told them that the mayor authorized him to solemnize the marriage and that Mayor Abral would just sign the documents when he arrived. Donato thereafter solemnized the marriage and le later turned over the documents to Mayor Abral for his signature. In the marriage contract, it was stated that the marriage was solemnized by Mayor Abral. What crimes did Mayor Abral and Donato commit? Mayor Abral is liable for falsification of public document by a public officer under Article 171 making an untruthful statement by stating in a marriage contract, a public document, that the marriage was solemnized by him is an act of falsification. The crime of illegal marriage is not committed because element that the offender has performed an illegal marriage ceremony is lacking. Ronald lovers his people. Donato committed the crime of usurpation of function under Article 177 of the Revised Penal Code because he performed the act of solemnizing marriage, which pertained to the mayor, a person in authority without being lawfully entitled to do so. The crime of legal marriage is not committed because the element that the offender is authorized to solemnize marriage is lacking. Ronolo versus People Andrea signed her deceased husband's name in endorsing his three treasury warrants, which were delivered to her directly by the district supervisor who knew that her husband had already died, and she used the proceeds to pay for the expenses of her husband's last illness and his burial. She knew that her husband had accumulated vacation and sick leaves, the money value of which exceeded that value of the three treasure warrants, so that the government suffered no damage. Andrea's appeal is based on her claim of absence of criminal intent and of good faith. Should she be found guilty of falsification? Andrea should be held guilty of falsification of public documents. Her claim of absence of criminal intent and of good faith cannot be considered because she is presumed to know that her husband is dead. The element of damage required in falsification does not refer to pecuniary damage but damage to public interest. True or false? For a person who transacts an instrument representing the proceeds of a covert unlawful activity to be liable under the Anti-Money Laundering Act, R.A. 9160 as amended, it must be shown that he has knowledge of the identities of the culprits involved in the commission of the predicate crimes. False. There is nothing in the law which requires that the accused must know the identities of the culprits involved in the commission of the predicate crimes. To establish liability under RA 9160, it is sufficient that proceeds of unlawful activity are transacted, making them appear to have originated from legitimate sources. There being probable cause to believe that certain deposits and investment in a bank are related to an unlawful activity of smuggling by Alessandro, as defined under RA 9160 as amended, Anti-Money Laundering Act, an application for an order to allow inquiry into his deposit was filed with the regional trial court 
After hearing the application, the court granted the application and issued a freeze order. Passed upon the correctness of the court's order. 2010. The freeze order issued by the regional trial court is not correct because jurisdiction to issue said freeze order is now vested with the Court of Appeals under Republic Act 9194, amending the Anti Money Laundering Act 9160. The regional trial court is without jurisdiction to issue a freeze order of the money involved. Define money laundering. What are the three stages in money laundering? Money laundering is the process by which a person conceals the existence of unlawfully obtained money and makes it appear to have originated from lawful sources. The intention behind such a transaction is to hide the beneficial owner of said funds and allows criminal organizations or criminals to enjoy proceeds of such criminal activities. The three stages in money laundering are 1. Placement or infusion of the physical disposal of criminal proceeds. Number two, layering or the separation of the criminal proceeds from their source by creating layers of financial transactions to disguise such proceeds as legitimate and avoid audit trail. Three, integration or the provision of apparent legitimacy to the criminal proceeds. Maita was the object of Solito's avid sexual desires. Solito had attempted many times to entice Maita to a date in bed with him, but Maita had consistently refused. Fed up with all her rejections, Solito abducted Maita around 7 p.m. one night. With his cohorts, Solito forced Maita into a Toyota Innova and drove off with her to a green painted house situated in a desolate part of the town. There, Solito succeeded in having carnal knowledge of Maita against her will. Meanwhile, the police authorities were tipped off that at 11.30 p.m. on that same night, Solito would be selling marijuana outside the green painted house. Acting on the tip, the PNP station of the town formed a by bus team with PO2 Masaho being designated the posture buyer. During the by bus operation, Solito opened the trunk of the Toyota Innova to retrieve the bag of marijuana to be sold to PO2 Masaho. To cut the laces that he had tied the bag with, Solito took out a Swiss knife, but his doing so prompted PO2 Masaho to effect his immediate arrest out of the fear that he would attack him with the knife. P.O. Tumasaho then confiscated the bag of marijuana as well as the Toyota Innova. Two informations were filed against Solita in the RTC, one for forcible abduction with rape, raffle to branch 8 of the RTC, the other for legal sale of drugs assigned to branch 29 of the RTC. Was Solito charged with the proper offenses based on the circumstances? B. While the prosecution was presenting its evidence in Branch 29, Branch 8 convicted Solito. Immediately after the judgment of conviction was promulgated, Solito filed in both branches a motion for the release of the Toyota Innova. He argued and proved that he had only borrowed the vehicle from his brother, the registered owner. Branch 8 granted the motion, but Branch 29 denied it. Were the two courts correct in their rulings? Explain your answer. 2017 Letter A. Answer. The charge of rape through forcible abduction is correct. The rule is settled that if the main objective of the accused is to rape the victim, the crime is rape, even if he abducted her forcefully. Forcible abduction is absorbed. The doctrine of absorption, rather than Article 48 of the RPC, is applicable since forcible abduction is an indispensable means to commit rape. People versus Mehorandai. If forcible abduction, however, is a necessary means to commit rape, this is a complex crime proper under Article 48 of RPC, People v. Tommy, where the victim was abducted with lewd design and brought to a house, People v. Magdarawag. In a desolated place, example, an inhabited cross of land, People v. Karaang, where she was raped. Forcible abduction should be treated as a necessary means to commit rape, and thus the crime committed is a complex crime of rape through forcible abduction under Article 48 of the Revised Penal Code. The charge of sale dangerous drugs is improper. Since this crime is consummated only upon the delivery of the dangerous drugs to the posture buyer for the consideration, since in this case Solita had not yet delivered 
the marijuana to PO2 Masaho when the latter apprehended the, the former. The crime committed is not sale of dangerous drugs, but attempted sale of dangerous drugs. In People v. Figuro Roa, where the sale was aborted when the police officers immediately placed a kiss under arrest, the crime committed is attempted sale. B. Yes, the two courts were correct in their rulings. The applicable provisions of law are Article 45 of the Revised Penal Code and Section 20 of RA 9165. Under Article 45 of the Revised Penal Code, every penalty imposed for the commission of a felony shall include the forfeiture of the instruments or tools with which the crime was committed, unless they be the property of a third person not liable for the offense. The Supreme Court ruled that the return of the instrument or tools to its owner cannot be prevented unless said owner is charged with the offense for which said instrument or tools was used. Pidea v. Brudet. The Supreme Court further ruled that the forfeiture of said instrument or tools, if warranted, would be part of the penalty prescribed. Pidea v. Brote has the determination of whether it will be forfeited could be made only when judgment is rendered. In this case, the RDC Branch 8 already rendered a judgment of conviction against Solito. Solito was able to prove that the car belonged to his brother who was not charged with forcible abduction with rape. Hence, it was correct for the RTC Branch 8 to order the release of the Toyota Innova to his brother who is not liable for the offense. On the other hand, Section 20 of RA number 9165 states in part, During the pendency of the case in the regional trial court, no property or income derived from the unlawful sale of any dangerous drug, which may be confiscated and forfeited, shall be dispersed, alienated, or transferred, and the same shall be in custodia legis, and no bond shall be admitted for the release of the same. The Supreme Court ruled that it is premature to release the car used in the sale of dangerous drugs while the trial is still ongoing, Pierre v. Brudet. The Supreme Court explained that the status of the car for the duration of the trial of the RTC as being in custodia legis, primarily intended to preserve it as evidence to ensure its availability as such. PDA versus Brudet. The RTC Branch 29 thus was correct in denying Solita's motion to release the Toyota Innova, considering that the trial for illegal sale of drugs is still ongoing. Demas was arrested after a valid by-bust operation. Macario, the policeman who acted as a posture buyer, inventoried and photographed 10 sachets of shabu in the presence of a barangay tanod. The inventory was signed by Macario in the tanod, but Demas refused to sign. As Macario was stricken with flu the day after, he was able to surrender the sachet to the PNP crime laboratory only after four days. During pre-trial, the counsel, the official of Demas, stipulated that the substance contained in the sachets examined by the forensic chemist is in fact methapentamine hydro chloride or shabu. Demas was convicted of violating Section 5 of RA 9165. On appeal, Demas questioned the admissibility of the evidence because Macario failed to observe the requisite chain of custody of the alleged shabu seized from him. On behalf of the state, the Solicitor General claimed that despite non-compliance with some requirements, the prosecution was able to show that the integrity of the substance was preserved. Moreover, even with some deviations from the requirements, the Council of Demas stipulated that the substance seized from Demas was shabu, so that the conviction should be affirmed. A. What is the chain of custody requirement in drug offenses? B. Rule on the contention of the state. 2016. A. To establish the chain of custody, the prosecution must show the movements of the dangerous drugs from its confiscation up to its presentation in court. The purpose of establishing the chain of custody is to ensure the integrity of the corpus delicti. People versus Magad. The following links that must be established in the chain of custody in a bypass situation are first, the seizure and marking, if practicable, of the illegal drug recovered from the accused by the apprehending officer. Second, 
the turnover of the illegal drugs seized by the apprehending officer to the investigating officer. Third, the turnover by the investigating officer of the illegal drug to the forensic chemist for laboratory examination. And fourth, the turnover and submission of the marked illegal drug seized from the forensic chemist to the court. People versus Kamad. To establish the first link in the chain of custody, and that is the seizure of the drug from the accused, the prosecution must comply with Section 21 of R8-9165, which requires that the apprehending officer after the confiscation of drug must immediately physically inventory and photograph the same in the presence of the accused or the person from whom such items were confiscated or his representative or counsel. A representative from the media and the Department of Justice and any elected public official who shall be required to sign the copies of the inventory and be given a copy thereof and within 24 hours upon such confiscation, the drug shall be submitted to the PDEA Forensic Laboratory for examination. B. The contention of the state is meritorious. Macario, the policeman, failed to comply with Section 21 of RA 9165 since the inventory and photograph of the drugs was only made in the presence of Barangay Tanod and the same was not submitted to the PNP Crime Laboratory within 24 hours. The rule is settled that failure to strictly comply with Section 21 Number 1, Article 2 of RA 9165 does not necessarily render an accused arrest illegal or the item seized or confiscated from him inadmissible. The most important factor is the preservation of the integrity and evidentiary value of the seized item. Moreover, the issue of non-compliance with Section 21 of RA 9165 cannot be raised for the first time on appeal. People versus Badilla. Amelia, a famous actress, bought a penthouse unit of a posh condominium building in Taguig City. Every night, Amelia would swim naked in the private but open-air pool of her penthouse unit. It must have been obvious to Amelia that she could be seen from nearby buildings. In fact, some residents occupying the higher floors of the nearby residential building did indeed entertain themselves and their friends by watching her swim in the nude from their windows. What crime did Amelia commit? 2013 B. Grave scandal because she committed highly scandalous acts that are offensive to decency or good customs. When the adoption of a child is affected under the Inter-Country Adoption Act for the purpose of prostitution, what is the proper charge against the offender who is a public officer in relation to the exploitative purpose? Qualified Trafficking in Persons, 2012. What crime is committed by a public officer who having control of public funds or property by reason of the duties of his office and for which he is accountable, permits any other person through abandonment to take such public funds or property. The public officer commits malversation. What is the criminal liability, if any, of a police officer who, while Congress was in session, arrested a member thereof for committing a crime punishable by penalty higher than prison mayor? The police officer incurs no criminal liability because the member of Congress has committed a crime punishable by a penalty higher than prison mayor. AA was appointed for two-year term to serve the unexpired portion of a resigned public official. Despite being disqualified after the lapse of the two-year term, AA continued to exercise the duties and powers of the public office to which appointed what is the criminal liability of AA. AA is criminally liable for prolonging performance of duties and powers. What crime is committed when a person assumes the performance of duties and powers of a public office or employment without first being sworn in? Anticipation of duties of a public office. What crime is committed by a public officer who before the acceptance of his resignation shall abandon his office to the detriment of the public service in order to evade the discharge of the duties of preventing, prosecuting, or punishing the crime of treason, qualified abandonment of office. 
A jailer inflicted injury on the prisoner because of his personal grudge against the latter. The injury caused illness of the prisoner for more than 30 days. What is the proper charge against the jailer? The jailer should be charged with maltreatment of prisoners and serious physical injuries. Alternative answer, the jailer should be charged with serious physical injuries only. What is the proper charge against a lawyer who reveals the secrets of his client learned by him in his professional capacity? The lawyer should be charged with betrayal of trust. A typhoon destroyed the houses of many of the inhabitants of X municipality. Thereafter, X municipality operated a shelter assistance program whereby construction materials were provided to the calamity victims and the beneficiaries provided the labor. The construction was partially done when the beneficiaries stopped helping with the construction for the reason that they need to earn income to provide food for their families. When informed of the situation, Mayor Mawain approved the withdrawal of 10 boxes of food from X municipalities feeding program, which were given to the families of the beneficiaries of the shelter assistance program. The appropriations for the funds pertaining to the shelter assistance program and those for the feeding program were separate items on X municipalities annual budget. What crime did Mayor Ma'awain commit? 2015. Mayor Ma'awain committed the crime of illegal use of public funds or property punishable under Article 220 of the RPC. This offense is also known as technical marvization. The crime has three elements, that the offender is an accountable public officer, that he applies public funds or property under his administration to some public use. C. That the public use for which such funds or property were applied is different from the purpose of which they were originally appropriated by law or ordinance. The funds for the feeding program are not specifically appropriated for the beneficiaries of the shelter assistance program in X municipalities annual budget. Mayor Mawain ought to use the boxes of food earmarked particularly for the feeding program, which would cater only to the malnourished among his constituents who needed the resources for proper nourishment. May Mayor Mawain invoke the defenses of good faith and that he had no evil intent when he approved the transfer of the boxes of food from the feeding program to the shelter assistance program? No. Mayor Mawain cannot invoke good faith when he approved the transfer of the boxes of food from the feeding program to the shelter assistance program. Criminal intent is not an element of technical malversation. The law punishes the act of diverting public property earmarked by law or ordinance for a particular purpose to another public purpose. The offense is mala prohibita, meaning that the prohibited act is not inherently immoral but becomes a criminal offense because positive law forbids its commission based on consideration of public policy, order, and convenience. It is the commission of an act as defined by the law, and not the character or effect thereof, that determines whether or not the provision has been violated. Hence, malice or criminal intent is completely irrelevant. Isidro versus People Filthy, a very rich businessman, convinced Loco, a clerk of court, to issue an order of release for Takas, Filthy's cousin, who was in jail for a drug charge. After receiving 500000 Loco forged the signature of the judge and the order of release and accompanied Filthy to the detention center. At the jail, Loco gave the guard 10000 to open the gate and let Takas out. What crime or crimes did Filthy, Loco, and the guard commit 2014? Filthy is liable of the delivery of prisoners from jail. Article 156 RPC, because he assisted in the removal of Takas, a detention prisoner from jail. 3. Corruption of public official. Article 212 RPC, because he gave 500000 to the clerk of court under circumstances in which said public officer would be liable of direct bribery. 4. Falsification of public documents, Article 172, Number 1, RPC, as a principle by inducement because he gave the clerk of court 500000 to induce him to force the signature of the judge in the order of release. Loco is liable for direct bribery, Article 210, RPC, because he accepted 500000 in consideration of the execution of an act which constitutes a crime. 
like the forging, the signature of the judge, and the order of release that would enable Takas to get out of jail, in connection with the performance of his duty as a clerk of court. Number 2. Falsification of public document, Articles of 171 RPC, because he took advantage of his position as a clerk of court in forging the signature of the judge in the order of release. And 3. Delivery of prisoners from jail, Article 156 RPC, because he assisted in the removal of Takas from jail by forging the signature of judge in the falsified order of release. The guard is liable of direct bri bribery, Article 210 RPC, because he agreed to open the gate and let Takas out in consideration of 10,000. 2. Infidelity in the custody of prisoners, Article 223 RBC, because he, as a custodian of Takas, connived or consented to his escape by opening the gate. What is the criminal liability, if any, of AAA, who substitutes for a prisoner serving sentence for homicide by taking his place in jail or penal establishment? AAA is criminally liable for delivering prisoner from jail and for using fictitious name. Criminal law, crimes committed by public officers, direct bribery, infidelity in the custody of prisoners, evasion of service of sentence, delivery of prisoners from jail, falsification of public documents. To secure a release of his brother Willie, a detention prisoner and his cousin Vincent, who is serving sentence for homicide, Chito asked the RTC branch clerk of court to issue an order which would allow the two prisoners to be brought out of jail. At first, the clerk refused, but when Chita gave her 50000 she consented. She then prepared an order requiring the appearance in court of Willie and Vincent, ostensibly as witnesses in a pending case. She forged the judge's signature and delivered the order to the jail warden, who in turn allowed Willie and Vincent to go out of jail in the company of an armed escort, Edwin. Tito also gave Edwin 50000 to leave the two inmates unguarded for three minutes and provide them with an opportunity to escape. Thus, Willie and Vincent were able to escape. What crime or crimes, if any, had been committed by the branch clerk of court? Edwin and the jail warden explain. The crimes committed in this case are the branch clerk of court committed the crimes of 1. Direct bribery, Article 210, for accepting the 50000 in consideration of the order she issued to enable the prisoner to get out of jail. 2. Falsification of public document for forging the judge's signature on said order, Article 171. 3. Delivery of prisoners from jail, Article 156, as a co-principal of Cheeto by indispensable cooperation, for making the false order and forging the judge's signature thereon to enable the prisoners to get out of jail. 4. Evasion of service of sentence, Article 157, as a co-principal of Vincent by indispensable cooperation for making the false order that enabled Vincent to evade service of his sentence. Edwin, the jail guard who escorted the prisoner in getting out of jail, committed the crimes of Infidelity in the custody of prisoners, specifically conniving with or consenting to evasion of leaving, unguarded the prisoners escorted by him and provided them an opportunity to escape. Article 223. Direct bribery for receiving the 50,000 as consideration for leaving the prisoners unguarded and allowing them the opportunity to escape. The jail warden did not commit nor incur a crime there, being no showing that he was aware of what his subordinates had done, nor of any negligence on his part that would amount to infidelity in the custody of prisoners. What is the crime of qualified bribery? Qualified bribery is a crime committed by a public officer who is entrusted with law enforcement and who, in consideration of any offer, promise, gift, or offer, refrains from arresting or prosecuting an offender who has committed a crime punishable by reclusion perpetua or death. May a judge be charged and prosecuted for such felony? How about a public prosecutor, a police officer, 2010? No, a judge may not be charged of this felony because his official duty as a public officer is not law enforcement, but the determination of cases already filed in court. On the other hand, a public prosecutor may be prosecuted for this crime in respect 
of the bribery committed, aside from the reliction of duty committed in violation of Article 208 of the Revised Penal Code, should be refrained from prosecuting an offender who has committed a crime punishable by reclusion perpetua and or death in consideration of any offer, promise, gift, or present. Meanwhile, a police officer who refrains from arresting such offender for the same consideration above stated may be prosecuted for this felony since he is a public officer entrusted with law enforcement. To aid in the rebuilding and revival of Takloban City and the surrounding areas that had been devastated by the strongest typhoon, the government and other sectors, including NGOs, banded together in the effort. Among the NGOs was Bangon Warai B. Bawi, headed by Mr. Jose Gulang, its president and CEO. Bawi operated mainly as a social amelioration and charitable institution. For its activities in the Taiwan stricken parts of Leda province, Bawi received funds from all sources, local and foreign, including substantial amounts from legislators, local government officials, and the EU. After several months, complaints were heard about the very slow distribution of relief goods and needed social service by Bawi. The Corps reported the result of its audit to the effect that at least 10 million worth of funds coming from public sources channeled to Bawi were not yet properly accounted for. The COA demanded reimbursement, but Bawi did not respond. Hence, Mr. Gulang was criminally charged in the office of the Ombudsman with malversation of public funds and failure of accountable officer to render accounts as respectively defined and punished by Article 217 and Article 218 of the Revised Penal Code. He was also charged with violations of Section 3, Letter E of RA 3019 for causing undue injury to the government. In his defense, Mr. Gulang mainly contended that he could not be held liable under the various charges because he was not a public officer. Who is a public officer? Discuss whether the crimes charged against Mr. Gulang are proper. 2017 Bar Letter A under Article 203 of the Revised Penal Code, any person who, by direct provision of the law, popular election or appointed by competent authority, shall take part in the performance of public functions in the government of the Philippine Islands, or shall perform in said government or in any of its branches public duties as an employee, agent or subordinate official of any rank or class, shall be deemed to be a public officer. B. As a general rule, Malversation and failure to render accounting can only be committed by an accountable public officer. However, Article 222 of the Revised Penal Code provides that the provisions on malversation and failure to render account shall apply to private individuals who, in any capacity, whatever, have charge of any national, provincial, or municipal funds, revenues, or property. The charges, therefore, against Mr. Gulang for malversation and failure to render accounting are proper, although he is a private individual. As a general rule, a private individual can be held liable for violation of RA 3019 if he conspired with a public officer in committing this crime. Go versus the 5th Division, Sandigambayan. However, there is no showing in this case that a public officer violated RA 3019 and Mr. Gulen conspired with that public officer in committing this crime. Hence, the charge against Mr. Gulen as a private individual without a co accused who is a public officer is improper. Overjoyed by the award to his firm of a multi-billion government contract for the development of an economic and tourism hub in the province of Blanc, Mr. Gangnam allotted the amount of 100 million to serve as gift for certain persons instrumental in his firm's winning the award. He gave 50% of that amount to Governor Datu, the official who had signed the contract with the proper authorization from the Sangguniang Panlalawigan. 25% to Bokol Diva, the Sangguniang Panlalawigan member who had lobbied for the award of the project in the Sangguniang Panlalawigan, and 25% to Mayor Dolor of the municipality where the project would be implemented. Governor Datu received his share through his wife, Provincial First Lady D, who then deposited the amount in her personal bank account. Previously, Upon facilitation by Bokal Diva, Mr. Gangnam concluded an agreement with Mayor Dolor for the construction of the Blanc's sports arena worth $800 million. The project was highly overpriced because it could be undertaken and completed for not more than $400 million. For this project, 
Mayor Dlor received from Mr. Gangnang a gift of 10 million, while Bokal Diva got 25 million. In both instances, Bokal Diva had her monetary gift deposited in the name of her secretary, Terry, who personally maintained a bank account for Bokal Diva's share in government projects. What provisions of RA 3019 Anti Graft and Corrupt Practices Act, if any, were violated by any of the above named individuals, specifying the persons liable, therefore, 2017 bar? What crimes under the revised penal code, if any, were committed, specifying the persons liable, therefore, 2017? Governor Tatu, Mayor Dolor, and Bokal Diva are liable for violations of Sections 3. B of RA number 3019 in receiving money in connection with government contract or transaction for the development of an economic and tourism hub where they have the right to intervene under the law. Mr. Gangnam for giving money to the said public officer ND who received kickbacks for her husband. Governor Datu are also liable for Violation of Section 3, Letter B of RA 3019 on the basis of conspiracy, Go versus the 5th of Division. Mayor Dolor and Bokal Diva are liable for violations of Section 3, Letter B of RA 3019 for receiving money in connection with government contract or transaction for the construction of the bank's sports arena or violation of Section 3, Letter E for giving Mr. Gangnam a private party, unwarranted benefits, advantage, or preference through manifest partiality and is highly overpriced, or violation of Section 3, letter G, for entering on behalf of the government into any contract or transaction for such construction manifestly and grossly disadvantages to the same. Mr. Gangnam for giving money to the said public officers or for entering such contract is also liable for a violation of Section 3 of RA 1319 on the basis of conspiracy. Go versus the 5th Division, Sandigan Bayan. Governor Tatu Mayor Dolor and Bokal Diva are liable for indirect bribery under Article 211 RPC for receiving money from Mr. Gangnam, offered to them by reason of their position as public officers, while the latter is liable for corruption of public officer. Direct bribery is not committed since there is no showing that they received the money by virtue of an agreement to commit a crime or unjust act in connection with the development of an economic and tourism hub and construction of the blank sports arena. The facts given above merely showed receipts of gifts. Meanwhile, Mr. Gangnam is liable for corruption of public officer under Article 212 of the RPC because of his act of giving gift to the public officer.